Um, yeah, so the uh, Terumo recently launched the uh, newest member of the KPOX uh, oxygenator family, the NX19. And we did a multi-center study and I'll be showing you some results. Uh, I have nothing to, uh, no conflicts of interest. So um, the NX19, uh, it has some improvements compared to uh, other oxygenators, uh, the, the predecessors like the FX25. Um, they changed the heat exchanger from stainless steel to a polymer heat exchanger, which should actually improve the heat exchange capacity. Uh, they incorporated uh, some new air removal technology to enable uh, better air removal. And what is probably most important for an oxygenator, uh, they uh, created smaller gas exchange fibers. You can see them on the picture here. On the left are the new fibers of the NX19, and on the right are the, uh, the old fibers. And with these new fibers, they also uh, made a more compact arrangement and that enabled them to uh, have a 75 uh, milliliter degrees in priming volume. Um, the new fibers and new arrangements uh, should also increase the gas transfer efficiency. Uh, of course, it led to a decreased surface area. And uh, what might seem a bit contradictory is that it also uh, should lead to a lower pressure drop over the oxygenator. Uh, so we did a, um, a clinical evaluation uh, consisting of three parts. We tested the heat exchanger performance, uh, we measured microemboli reduction of the oxygenator, and we did uh, the clinical evaluation part. And uh, well, we as, as three hospitals, Maastricht, Leuven and Antwerp, uh, each hospital we did uh, 50 cases with the NX19, uh, so a total of 150 units. Uh, we only did measurements uh, in patients with uh, elective cabbage, AVR, or a combination of both. And uh, the priming and the cardiopulmonary bypass itself were done according to uh, the local hospital protocol. Uh, these are the results from our uh, heat, ex heat exchanger performance test. Um, we made a, an experimental setup, just one uh, NX19 uh, to do this test with. Um, we gave, uh, we measured at two different flows, uh, three liters per minute, which is the, the solid blue line on top, and six liters per minute, which is the dotted line. And uh, we then gave five different Venus temperatures into the NX19, frying from 25 to 36 degrees. Uh, and um, we then started the heater cooler unit attached to the NX19 and measured the uh, heat exchanger performance factor. Uh, what we found was that at three liters per minute, uh, the performance factor was 0.8, and at six liters per minute, uh, the performance factor was 0.58. Um, and when, uh, when we looked at the instructions for use uh, for the NX19, it stated that the performance factor should be 0.83 at three liters per minute, so that's quite comparable to what we found. Uh, and at uh, 6 liters per minute, uh, it was stated at 0.68, which is a little uh, higher than what we found at 0.58. But when looking at the IFU of the FX25, uh, they reported a performance factor of 0.74 at 3 liters per minute. So the NX19 uh, seems to have a, a little increase there. And at 6 liters per minute, um, it, the value of 0.58 was exactly the same as what we found in the NX19. So from our results compared to the IFU, there's a, only a small increase in heat exchanger performance of the NX19 compared to the FX25. But according to the measurements in the uh, IFU, there should be a, a more increase in performance factor. Um, but the increase in the heat exchanger performance is not the only advantage of a polymer heat exchanger. Uh, it also leads to a reduced thermal shock to the blood because there's uh, over the polymer, there's a, a temperature gradient, so the, the blood in contact with the uh, polymer doesn't get that much of a thermal shock as compared to blood in contact with a stainless steel version. And um, the polymer heat exchangers have improved biocompatibility and reduced uh, thrombogenicity, which is all explained in this, this uh, study by Consolo. But in our study, we didn't uh, do a, a real biocompatibility test. Uh, all that we could say was that uh, after CPB, we had normal fibrinogen levels and uh, we had only a small decrease in platelet count. So that's an indication that there was no excessive uh, platelet or fibrinogen consumption in the NX19. 
Uh, these are the results from our microemboli count. Um, there were some differences between the three centers in both microemboli count and microemboli volume, uh, but that is probably due to a different custom pack that we used in the three centers uh, and uh, different, priming, uh, different priming fluids. Uh, but on average, we found a 91% reduction in microemboli count and a almost 94% reduction in microemboli volume. If we compare that to uh, uh, levels of uh, reductions found in literature, this is a study by uh, Johagen who tested uh, the uh, microemboli reduction of the KPOX FX25. And when looking at the emboli count, they found a reduction of almost 90% at four liters per minute, but only 55, 56% at uh, six liters per minute. So the NX19 seems to be performing better in, in uh, the reduction of microemboli count. Uh, this is a study by Stehauer who uh, analyzed four different oxygenators. Uh, what they found was that and microemboli count, the um, KPOX FX25 and the fusion were doing the best with a, about 60% reduction in microemboli count. Uh, so that's also an indication that the NX19 is performing better. Um, and when looking at uh, GME volume, uh, Johagen found a 99% and 98% reduction in, uh, in volume. So that's a little higher than the 94% we calculated for the uh, NX19. Um, but in the study by Stehauer, they, uh, they again had an in, in the microemboli volume reduction. They again had the KPOX FX25 and the fusion uh, to perform the best. But they only had a 94, 95% reduction. So that's quite similar to what we found for the NX19. Um, so all in all, with a 91% reduction in uh, microemboli count and 94% reduction in volume, the NX19 seems to be working quite well to reduce microemboli. Um, for the clinical evaluation, we uh, measured the, the pressure in the gas uh, compartment uh, just to see the effect of the smaller diameter of the gas fiber. Uh, but we found an average pressure of uh, six millimeters of mercury, so it doesn't seem to have uh, any relevant uh, effect on the, on the gas pressure. Uh, we also calculated the oxygenator resistance uh, just to see the effect of the uh, new ar fiber arrangement uh, on the resistance and we found that it was uh, 10.5 millimeters of mercury per liter per minute. And compared to uh, other contemporary oxygenators, you can see that the NX19 is on the, on the low end uh, together with the FX25 and the, the Quadrox. Uh, we calculated shear stress at 5.1, um, which is slightly higher than values uh, calculated in, uh, in other oxygenators, um, but it's, uh, it's not really a, a relevant increase, I think, because it's still uh, far below values that lead to uh, red blood cell uh, damage or, um, or a, a platelet uh, activation. Uh, and the gas transfer, we calculated uh, O2 and CO2 transfer, which were both around 70 milliliters per minute per square meter membrane surface area. Uh, when compared to values calculated for the uh, KPOX FX25, we can see that the NX19 is performing uh, quite a lot better. That's also um, shown by other factors like the, the shunt fraction. We calculated it to be uh, 0.19 for the NX19. And uh, for the FX25, it was calculated to be uh, 0.32. So it's also an indication that in the NX19 oxygenator, there's less blood going through the oxygenator without effective gas transfer. And uh, the last thing I want to show you is the uh, oxygen transfer slope we made. Uh, it has the patient's oxygen consumption on the uh, x-axis and the corresponding FAO2 setting on the uh, y-axis. And what it shows is that uh, at uh, well, let's see if it works at uh, the higher levels of oxygen consumption with 200 to 300 uh, milliliters per minute, you can easily um, uh, handle that with uh, FAO2 settings of 40 to 60 or you know, let's say 65 percent. So it's also an indication that the uh, the oxygen transfer is is uh, good in the NX19. So what we concluded is that the uh, polymer heat exchanger improves the heat exchanger performance, 
the air removal uh, technology uh, removes 91% of microemboli count and 94% of microemboli volume. So that also seems to be working quite well. And the incorporation of the smaller gas exchange fibers uh, led to uh, quite a large reduction in priming volume. Uh, it enhanced the gas transfer efficiency and it had only little effect on uh, the gas pressure, the resistance of the oxygenator and the shear stress in the oxygenator. Thank you.